Many people will ask, what does the port got to do with the government summit? We are very interested in the government summit because simply, DP World, we have partnership with many governments around the world. These partnerships are the reason for our growth and success around the world. What do we do in DP World? We enable trade. So the question is, what's the future of a trade? The future of trade is a smart trade. What do you mean by smart trade? Smart trade meaning that we move the cargo faster, smarter, more efficient, and using cutting aid technology. So government planning is very important for us. Interaction with government is very crucial for our business. And if we look at planning, there is no better example about sound government planning like United Arab Emirates. And as an example of the many development plans in UAE, we'll take the example of Dubai. UAE ranks as the 30 highest GDP in the world. In 1971, the GDP of the United Arab Emirates was $2 billion. Today, it's $400 billion. How did we get this? How did we reach this stage of development? It's about planning. But then if you look at the 70s till today, the 70s was characterized by building very large infrastructure. So the 70s, the Union of the United Arab Emirates was announced in 1971, and huge construction. The whole country became a construction site, building ports, which was very important. In UAE, we have seven ports. We realized the importance of a trade for us. To be open for trade, we need to develop ports. And so the, the huge ex expansion started with Jabal Ali in the, uh, with many other projects, schools, universities, uh, health, and so on. So the era of the 70s was construction and infrastructure, which helped the port. The era of the 80s was enabling trade, free trade zone in Jabal Ali and many other parts of UAE. In the 90s, it was the year of tourism. Government decided to make Dubai a tourist place. What did that mean to us? It means they're going to build more hotels and more cargo is going to come and the port should be ready. Just for statistics, in 1990, there were about 35,000 tourists coming to Dubai. Today, we are close to 15 million. We would have not reached this if we haven't planned and prepared our country. Year 2000 was the electronic government. And when His Highness announced the electoral government in a stage like this, many of us didn't know what he meant. 2010 onward, it is the smart government. Electronic government, you can contact the government, get all your transactions processed during office hours. Smart government, it is working 24-7. What does that mean to us? Today, we process in excess of 19 million documents processing, whether it's customs, the port, the free zone, the airport. It is almost more than one and a half million documents every month. That is 50,000 documents every day. It will be virtually impossible to process 50,000 documents every day without adapting cutting edge technologies. Had we not planned ahead, we would not be able to handle this much cargo. This is a very interesting picture. This picture is an artistic impression done 40 years ago. When Sheikh Rashid decided to build Jabal Ali, the, the, the contractors 
the consultant met with him before designing it, asking him, what do you want to build? What do you need to build? What is your expectation? And from his words, they drew this picture. It is interesting picture for me because in 1985, when we wanted to, when the government announced the free zone, I wanted more land. And I went to the government, I went to Jahan Sheikh Mohammed, and he said to me, you can take as much desert as you want south of Sheikh Zayed Road. So I went with the municipality surveyors, and we went to the desert for maybe four hours, and I want to take as much land as I can. The next day, the municipality told me, you cannot go beyond a certain point. There is an airport there. And if you see this picture, I don't know if it's clear to you, on the top, you see an airplane flying there. That is the Concorde, actually. Because at that time, the future was the Concorde. The airport should actually handle a Concorde, 40 years ago. Also, interesting enough in this picture, it's a container port. It is the beginning of containerization, actually. Nobody believed cargo will go into containers, but 40 years ago, we planned to have an airport and to have a container port. Now, I tried to argue with the government, I Sheikh Mohammed, that there is no airport, because I actually took a helicopter at that time to see whether there's an airport, and there was no airport. But Sheikh Mohammed said, no, we have an airport, will be an airport. Here, Jabal Ali, free zone, and the port. Jabal Ali free zone today contributes something like 20% of, of, of Dubai GDP. In this picture, which is very interesting, you see the airport there at the bottom. And you see the free zone and the port at the top. And in the middle is the logistic city. This kind of a plan that was done 40 years ago helped us because having an airport, a logistic park, and a port is a dream of the people in the freight business because it allows cargo to move seamlessly without any hindrance. This cannot happen in many parts of the world. Look at Antwerp. They could never expand the port because the city swallowed the port. There's no way to expand. But 40 years ago, we decided we want to lose. The success of our planning in Dubai helped us when we go to other countries. For example, this is London Gateway. We were able to do a port, a logistic park, and an airport already very close to us, whether it's Stansted or South End. This could happen when there is enough space in a new a green field. We built the largest logistic park in Europe <clears throat> and invested during the crisis. This project was so attractive, and we ventured on it during the crisis. Who would want to go to the banks to borrow money in a crisis where all the banks around the world were bleeding? But we had a very interesting proposal to the banks regarding our investment. They liked our project. It was interesting for them, and we got financed very attractive rates for 20 years, and we built it. We're doing the same in Dominican Republic. In this picture, you see on the left, the airport. On the right is the port. We acquired the land in the middle, and we're building a logistic park. Because we know it succeeded in Dubai, it is contributing to the port, and it's going to help us here. This picture here is very interesting. This shows you where we are in the world. We are in 31 countries. These 31 countries enabling trade in half of the world economy. Who would believe that United Arab Emirates build a company that will enable trade in half of the world economy? This is something we are very, very proud of. How did we do this? By working with governments. We advised government internationally based on our experience. And there was an example where we actually advised a country 
regarding building a port when all the feasibilities were wrong. All the feasibilities doesn't show that's going to be feasible. But we convinced them to go ahead. We believed in it, and it was a success. And actually, it proved that those feasibilities were not right. They lacked common sense. They lacked experience. But why do you want growth? Why growth in countries is very important for us? In our business, when you measure by containers, a growth in the GDP of 1% translate to 3% in containers, traffic. So for us, whenever we go to any country, before we go, we look at their growth in GDP, and we calculate how much the growth, and we translate the growth into containers, one to three. So it is very vital for us to see growth. What will be the future? What will happen to our business? What kind of innovations we need? Sometimes innovation brings challenges. And I'll give you an example. As they build bigger vessels, we end up with bigger cranes. And the container business keeps expanding. The comp just like they build the 380 airplane, imagine the 380 airplane. Not every airport can handle a 380 airplane. But only the airport that has the capability of bringing the passengers in and out. The same thing in our business. So when we build these cranes, they started to be maybe 100 feet high, 100 meter high, 150. The crane operator is the person who's like the heart of the port. We realized that it would be difficult to be able to see with their own eyes where the container is. And so what happened? We looked at automation. At that time, automation was an idea, and people in limited places. What we meant by automation, basically, that does the crane operator really need to be on top? Can we put them somewhere else? And in fact, I was discussing with Sheikh Mohammed these challenges. And he comes up, some, uh, he thinks out of the box, actually. And he said, if they can fly drones 7,000 kilometers away, and they reach their target, you cannot uh, handle a crane a few meters or a few hundred yards. And so we did a test in our port in Busan, Korea. And a female operator tested a crane to handle, basically, cargo. And within a year, we realized, yes, it can happen. It can be done. And we decided to go with it. That's our future of business. Now, here is an example. We announced that we're asking our employees who want to be a crane operator. And interesting enough, many female workers, nationals, decided to take this new job. And so His Highness attended when we inaugurated our Terminal 3, where a female crane operator handles one crane, and we're training them to handle two, and they could be able to handle eight cranes at the same time. Now, look, the, it is a male job, actually. Crane operator is a male job. And the crane operator can only sit in the top there for three hours. After three hours, you got to change him because the shaking and the jerking of the seat will hurt him. Will hear in their own convenience. And actually, after they started their job, they said, why do we need to be in Jabal Ali? So we are building a crane operating control system in Dubai, in Port Rashid, and we'll handle our Port Jabal Ali from here with our employees. Challenges turn to opportunities. Sometimes you come to a place where you say, we cannot go. But we learn in Dubai, we turn challenges to opportunities. This is an interesting uh, concept. Uh, you can read it, say, turn eight, but actually it's turned to infinity. So infinity looks like eight. This is basically uh, an incubation. We have so many innovations in our industry, but in this particular uh, concept, we actually embraced many innovations. We have gone through maybe 8,000 
uh, enterprises in the last two years. 51 startups, we financed them to start their operation from all kinds of business, That's not necessarily our own business. In this picture, there is something interesting. There is something missing in this picture. There is no people in this picture. This is our state-of-the-art Rotterdam Gateway port in Rotterdam. This port, there are no humans in it, actually. The humans are somewhere else. So you can see the cranes on the left. There are no human in them. You can see the gantries in the yard. There are no human. You don't see any trucks. Because this age is the age of the brain. We are using people's brains now. So all the people are in their offices thinking how to serve the customers using their brain. There is an old saying 50 years ago, if you hire two hands, you get their brain for free. In here, actually, our business is moving smartly to a smart business, whereby we use people's brains to develop our business. So what does the future hold for our business? Would they transport cargo in drones? Or would it be a hyperloop? They're contemplating actually uh, handling the cargo and bringing it in tubes, which means maybe we don't need seaports. Maybe the port should not be in the sea. Maybe the cargo will go to the end user without going to the uh, port. But no matter what will be the future, could be an innovation, could be disruptive innovation, but I can assure you we will be ready for it in Dubai, we'll be ready for it in DP World. Thank you very much.